Welcome to the secret lab on Giada, Font of Hope. We have an angel mana dwarf that gives plus one counters to angels as they enter the battlefield. Oh yes, was not expecting this from the new set, but uh, here we are. I'm very excited, so let's go and jump on into it. Um, we have Giada, Font of Hope. So we have one colorless, one white mana, um, flying and vigilance. Then each angel you, uh, each other angel you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one counter on it for each angel you already control. Then tap, add white mana, spend this mana only to cast an angel spell. Now as far as the creativity on a deck like this, this is very low creativity. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't build your own flavor of Giada, but when you're looking at the card pool, you know, at the end of the day, this deck needs to be mono white angels in some form or fashion. So as far as the actual creative creativity on a deck like this, it is very low, but you can still get kind of creative with it, depending on whether you're just going full angel tribal, uh, maybe you're building some sort of enchantress, you know, generate angel tokens, whatever that is. Um, you do have creative room to kind of take this deck in a certain area, but at the end of the day, this needs to be some sort of deck that is generating angels or building angel board states. So the creativity is a little bit low on this, but you can still have fun in your actual deck building. As far as the support goes, like I mentioned, this is an angel deck. You need to have a lot of support for in here for angels, either a lot of angels or a way to generate angels. And with the timing of this commander, this is a very quick commander that you're trying to get out very often because you want that mana to help you get angels out there. And at the same time, you want that plus one counter going. Um, with it having a low creativity, high support, and low timing, um, this is a commander that's going to look similar to a lot of the other decks out there. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with building kind of like a net deck of Giada because at the end of the day, there's just X amount of cards that go good in there. So um, have fun with this. You know, if you normally uh, a person that builds commander decks that have a lot of flavor and a lot of interactions, and you just don't really want to build a mono white angel deck, hey, give it a shot. It's a lot of fun to build a tribal deck and also to build a mono white angel tribal deck. Like I've never built an angel tribal deck, so I'm very excited to play this one. So, so give it a shot, even though the creativity and the actual deck is going to look very similar to a lot of people out there. Um, it still sounds like a lot of fun to actual play. Moving on to the actual angels you're going to be running in your deck. You know, depending on what sort of play style you're going for, at least running some variation of these is going to be really good for you. Archangel of Thune is going to give you, uh, whenever you gain life, put a plus one counter on each creature you control. Um, Avacyn is going to make your creatures indestructible. And uh, Dawnbringer is going to give your creatures plus one, plus one, and have lifelink. So as far as your actual angel package, you do want to run some variation of these commander, these particular cards. Um, one of the main reasons is you want to be able to buff your board state in addition to those plus one counters. So whether you're giving them plus one counters from life gain, whether you're making them indestructible, or you're simply just giving them lifelink, whatever that is but you want to have some amount of angels in there that do care about kind of buffing up your board state or giving you that extra value as you invest into your angels um, these are all angels that can be threats you know let's say that you know a lot of these angels have flying so being able to get these angels down let's say your opponent has a planeswalker out there that you want to take care of having some sort of high impact mid-range angel um, that's really going to help you kind of take care of threats on the battlefield and also protect your board state by having something that, you know, flying first strike lifelink protection from demons and dragons with Bane Slayer Angel. Hey, that, that is a threatening creature right there. So um, if you want to have all of your angels be threatening, you know, whatever that may be, but having some sort of really nice threat to get down that can kind of be the enforcer for your board state, um, that's also going to help out. Um, outside of buffing your board state, outside of having, you know, very, uh, very big angel threats, you also want to run some sort of angels that interact your opponent's board state. Um, Linvala, um, activated abilities of creatures your opponent's control can't be activated. Um, if you're playing it against an aristocrat's deck, you know, anything where your creatures have, your opponent's creatures have activations, Linvala will shut that down very, very quickly. And unless they have some sort of removal for Linvala, it's kind of like you just put a pause on the game and you get to keep doing what you're doing. So that Linvala is very good in that regards to where, you know, you can get an angel down, but at the same time, the pressure that Linvala uh, puts on opponents, it is very much uh, a very good thing to have. Um, same thing with Righteous. Uh, whenever another angel or cleric enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. Um, if you can get Righteous down and get that life gain going, um, you can slowly work towards that plus two, plus two board state, you know, that board buff. Uh, but at the same time, that's going to be a lot of life game where you're getting toughness, especially in a deck where you're trying to get angels down. And then also with Herald of War, uh, whenever it attacks, put a plus one counter on it, then angels and human spells you cast cost one less to cast for Herald of War. So this is a sizable angel threat with Herald of War, but at the same time, 
uh, you're going to be able to get those plus one counters on it, and it's going to give you a wonderful reduced cost. And you know, like with Avacyn, um, Avacyn, we're looking at eight total mana. So we get down Herald of War, we get those plus one counters going, we can conceivably get down Avacyn for only three white mana with Herald of War on the battlefield. So, you know, one of the main things to take away in your angel packages have some diversity in what they do. You know, if you're simply just going, you know, beat down with the angels, that's awesome, but have some sort of diversity because Limbala is going to allow you to lock down your opponents. Righteous is going to give you life gain. Herald of War is going to give you that reduced cost. Whatever that may be, you want to have some sort of diversity in your actual angel package. Um, one of the other things that you do want to incorporate into your Giada deck is having some sort of way to interact with plus one counters. You're going to get plus one counters in this deck very cheaply and very freely. So having some sort of extra added benefit from that is really going to work out. Um, with uh, Sin, um, this is going to allow you to, each creature with a plus one counter, it can block an additional creature. So you know a lot of your angels have flying and vigilance sometimes, so that's going to allow you to block two extra creatures. Uh, Bondkin is going to allow your creatures with a plus one counter to have first strike. And then Obzon Battle Priest is going to allow them to have lifelink. So um, these are all low investment cards that have an immediate impact on your flying creatures out there. You know, you can simply just get down Obzon Battle Priest, swing in with your flying angels, all of a sudden they have lifelink. And that was just a very, very low investment for four. And then if your opponent wants to spend resources getting rid of Obzon Battle Priest, you still have your angel force out there. So having some sort of way to interact with plus one counters or getting a bonus from plus one counters is really going to make your Giada deck very good. Um, same thing with Elite Scale Guard. Um, whenever a creature you control with a plus one counter on attacks, you're going to be able to tap down uh, defend, uh, creature defending player controls. Um, hopeful Initiate, that's going to allow you to, let's say that you get to the point to where you just have a ton of plus one counters on a lot of your angel tokens, but you just don't have a board state that's going to allow you to take out a different player or two. Um, simply being able to just sit there and get those plus one counters going on your creatures and then for three mana, destroy a target artifact or enchantment. Yeah, Hopeful Initiate is really going to allow you to put some pressure on the board state outside of just swinging in you know being able to just clean up stuff three man at a time that's really good and then also with ritualist uh, whenever it enters the battlefield plus one, put a plus one counter on each of up to two other target creatures then whenever a non-token creature you control with a plus one counter on it dies uh, create a one one white spirit creature token with flying um, with ritualist this is going to be a great way to where if you're investing into your angels and they have plus one counters on it and whenever it dies, you're going to be able to get some spirit tokens. So now these spirits don't necessarily work well with angels. They are a flying creature. But let's say it's late in the game. Somebody goes for a board wipe. Having Ritualists out there as some sort of backup protection uh, to get those extra spirit tokens in case something happens, that's going to allow you to have a board state to swing in and start attacking opponent's life totals. And then also little things like unbounded potential. Um, cards like this, you know, you can almost use this as a combat trick, you know, with unbounded potential. And put a plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. So let's say that you swing in, your opponent declares some blocks, you can go for that. Or if you just end up going for the proliferate, you know, if we have a lot of angels out there, you declare some attacks, you declare some blocks, and then you just go for proliferate for two mana to buff up the number of plus one counters you have on your angel tokens. That is a very good card in itself. Uh, Micaeus, you know, this is one of those things to where, you know, you don't have to run Micaeus in there, but angels care about humans sometimes, so having some sort of way to just put a bunch of creatures on all of your creatures, that's a great way to go for that. And then with Paragon, um, whenever you gain life, you may put that many plus one counters on each creature you control. You know, it, this is six mana, you can only do it once per turn, but I promise you, if you get this down, you get any sort of life gain, the plus one counters that you're getting on each creature that you control, man, that is going to end up with a very sizable board, uh, uh, board state very quickly. And uh, you could be able to hopefully knock some players out with Nick those Paragon at the same time just gaining uh, gaining life off of that. We also want to talk about ways in which you can make angel tokens. So a lot of these cards I'm about to cover, um, they may require life gain, they may require quest counter. So what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be going over these cards uh, without relation to each other. So with Luminarch Ascension, um, this is a wonderful way to generate angel tokens. So you can get this down if you didn't lose life, especially in the early game. Um, if you didn't lose any life and you get those quest counters on there, you're going to be able to generate full four angel tokens for two mana a pop. And especially with Giada out there, that is going to end up with a very, very sizable angel army very quickly with that. So Luminarch is a wonderful way to generate angel tokens. Uh, Book of the Exalted Dreed, uh, Deeds and Angelic Accord. And um, once again, they do kind of the same thing. And it's just if you gained X amount of life, create uh, X angel token on the battlefield. So um, with the Book of Exalted Deeds, it does have the triple, uh, triple white, exile it, uh, put in a light encounter on target angel. You can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. Um, that is, hey, you run it in there. You're building a mono white angel deck. So having some sort of uh, alternative win condition like that where you can just get your angel book out and close it and 
put it onto one of your angels. Have some fun. That's a wonderful way to generate angel tokens and kind of make your opponent sweat on the battlefield. But yes, with Angelic Accord, um, if you gain four more life, which is really not that crazy if you're getting a lot of creatures down through end of the battlefield effects or, you know, with that angel we previously talked about where you gain life equal to its toughness, you're going to be able to generate these angel tokens very easily and a lot of fun. Um, one of the other ways you definitely want to, you know, think about taking this deck is having some sort of, you know, a tap out, create X angel spells or, a, uh, excuse me, angel tokens. Um, so Decree of Justice and Treat the Angels um, Unleashed, they all have the same style effect and that is dump a ton of mana into this spell and get a ton of angels onto the battlefield. Um, there's going to be a lot of times to where, let's say it's in the late game, you've been hit with a board wipe, you have a ton of mana but nothing else to do, and you're just kind of in top deck mode. Um, running into Decree of Justice and especially running into Entreat the Angels off the top part of your library, um, having a way to instantly create a ton of angels is going to allow you to bounce back from a board wipe and hopefully close the game out. And outside of the actual token generation through life gain, through you know tapping out, adding a bunch of stuff, uh, you also have cards like Divine Visitation. So if you if one or more creature tokens will be created under your control, create that many full four white angel creature tokens. Um, you are building an angel deck, and so with Divine Visitation, at the very least, you know, there's some ways that you can get some 2-2, two -two, some 3-3 three -three angels out there. Um, if you have uh, Divine Visitation out there, that's at least going to filter those tokens into 4-4s four with Flying and Vigilance. So that's a good thing to run in your deck. It just kind of depends on how heavy you are going into the uh, angel token. Uh, brand new Elspeth. That's going to be ways that if you can get to that ultimate pretty quick, because you go for that plus one, uh, get those counters going on your angels, and if you get to that minus seven, uh, create five through three white angel creature tokens. It, it's really not that hard to get to, to seven loyalty with Elspeth, so being able to just kind of generate a quick little angel army. And then also with Sigil of the Empty Throne, whenever you cast an enchantment spell, create a full four white angel creature token with flying. So um, there's going to be a lot of enchantments in a mono white deck, so even if you're not building a mono white enchantress, having Sigil of the Empty Throne in here to create those angel tokens off of an enchantment spell um, that's, yeah, that's a wonderful way to kind of build up that angel army. Um, like I did mention, there's a lot of life gain in angel style decks. You get some sort of benefit. So running some sort of life gain package in here wouldn't hurt. Um, Soul Warden and Lunark Veteran. Um, these are just great generic enter the battlefield life gain effects. You know, even if you don't have a life gain set up angel deck, you know, or you know, dedicated to, I need to have life gain happen. Simply just having these creatures in here to kind of pad your life total as the game goes on. Um, these are great things to have. And also with Bishop of Wings, um, whenever an angel enters the battlefield under your control, which we are building an angel deck, you gain four life. And also you have the added protection. Uh, whenever an angel you control dies, create a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying. No matter what sort of angel deck you're building, uh, having Bishop of Wings in there, it is going to be a very, very important card because that life gain really matters. And having that board, uh, that board investment protection with getting those spirit tokens um, that is a great way for you to bounce back and still maintain some sort of threat against your opponents on the battlefield. Now, some of the kind of generic good stuff in an angel deck that you're building, um, having some sort of reduced cost is going to matter. We have a Spurrant and we have a Herald's Horn. These are very generic. It's just angel spells you cast cost two less to cast, and then with Herald's Horn, they cost one less. And like we've discussed with Herald of War, um, as you get more plus one counters on it, that's going to give you that good reduced cost. So you do have a lot of angels that are high impact at the four, five, six, seven mana range. So having some sort of reducer is very important in a deck like this. You know, when you're playing goblins, it's nice to have the reducer, but you don't really need that reducer sometimes if you're playing elves or goblins. Uh, but with angels, you know, you are gonna be paying a pretty good iron price for each angel that you're getting out there. And especially, you know, as you get into the four, five, six converted mana costs. So having some sort of way to get that reduced cost, it's definitely gonna help you get those angel tokens on the, uh, get those angel creatures onto the battlefield um, very quickly. Uh, the other thing that you can do in a deck like this is run some sort of changeling package. You know, with birthing and maskwood nexus, Having some sort of way to just three or four mana, just put an angel token onto the battlefield, get the plus one counters going. Let's say you have a lot of angels out there. You go for Masswood Nexus, create that shapeshifter token, which is an angel. You're going to get the benefit of all those plus one counters, even though these shapeshifter tokens may not have flying. Um, simply being able to get down a 2-2 that turns into like a 6-6 or a 7-7 or whatever, just for three mana. 
Um, that is very good in itself. And also, cards like a regular cohort. Um, it has Changeling, which is going to make it an angel. And then when it enters the battlefield, you're going to get a 2-2 Shapeshifter uh, creature with Changeling. So basically, for 4 mana, you're going to end up with, you know, let's say we have 4 angels on the battlefield. We get a 6-6 with the regular cohort. Then that token that tags along, that's going to be a 7-7. So for simply 4 mana, you can end up with these very sizable creatures. Now, they won't have flying, but if you have some sort of way to kind of give your board state flying, or, you know, at the end of the day, just... Turning a 7-7 sideways is <laughs> kind of hard for people to deal with sometimes. Um, outside of the ways to, you know, outside of the angels that we're running, the ways to generate angels, um, you also want to run some sort of equipment package. Um, you have creatures that have flying, so it's going to be easy for you to connect and get some sort of extra value. A Valkyrie Sword uh, enters the battlefield, you can pay 5 mana, create an extra angel war, your creature took them a flying and attach it to it, or simply just use it as a generic sword. Uh, but having that ability to, you know, ripping into this into the late game, being able to get this down for six mana, end up with an angel, and get that extra bonus, very nice. Uh, Moon Silver Spear, that's going to allow you to get the angel tokens whenever it attacks, create an angel token. And then with Great Sword, uh, whenever a quick creature attacks the player with the most life or tied for the most life, create a full four uh, white angel token uh, that's flying, that's tapped and attacking that player. So um, even if you're not going equipment, um, but you still want to stick on theme with the generating as many angels as possible, um, being able to get these down and attack and get extra angels that enter the battlefield to get those plus one counters going, oh yeah, that's some good stuff. And uh, outside of the actual generating angels, you know, stuff like Sword of Truth and Justice and Sword of Feast and Famine, uh, you have creatures that are flying, so most of the time you're going to at least be able to connect at somebody on the table and get that trigger. Sort of the Truth and Justice is going to give you that pro uh, proliferate on the damage trigger, which is very nice. And then Sword of Feast and Famine is going to allow you to, uh, your opponent has to discard a card, but the main thing is you get to untap your lands, uh, which is going to be very important in a deck like this. Uh, Parhelion, that is not a piece of equipment, but... A lot of your angels are going to have base power toughness 4. This is a heavy mana investment at 8 total mana. But whenever it attacks, create 2 full 4 white angel creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. Excuse me, that are flying and vigilance that are attacking. Um, as far as if you're building an angel deck, there's no better angel finisher than Parhelion. You know, it is a lot of mana, but man, that sounds like a lot of fun. Being able to crew up an angel token, then have 2 more angels come down onto the battlefield. Yes, toss it in there, have some fun. Um... Even if you play with it for a little bit and cut it, because 8 mana is a lot, but, you know, a lot of these angels do cost a lot, so it's not that crazy to run Parhelion in there. And then also, you know, you don't have to go super heavy into this, but some sort of enter the battlefield style effect that's really going to matter in a deck like this. Um, Cather's Crusade, that's really going to amplify the plus one counters that we're already working with Giada. And since we do care about creatures entering the battlefield, you know, having some sort of Conjurer's Closet effect or Panharmonicon effect... Um, the Panharmonicon effect is not going to trigger with Giada because Giada is a replacement effect. But you do have creatures that do something that enter the battlefield. And if you're running Conjurer's Closet to get extra tokens on creatures, hey, it doesn't hurt to have Panharmonicon in there and maybe have a few extra creatures that have entered the battlefield effects. But at the very least, Cather's Crusade is going to be a great way for you to have an extra finisher for the deck uh, as you get more creatures down. And especially with that Panharmonicon and Cather's Crusade, oh yes. Uh, get those plus one counters going. Um, like I mentioned, uh, one of the things that we can do is kind of run some sort of bounce effect as a combat trick. So exile target creature you control, returns to the battlefield under your control. That's going to be an instant way to get a bunch of plus one counters on a creature very quickly. Um, same thing with portal and eerie interlude. Um, you do need to be careful with the amount of creatures that you're exiling because if they come back and they don't have, you know, I don't know how that actually works with Giada, but basically you can use some sort of bounce effect as a combat trick, especially if you have a lot of angels out there. And at the same time, at least just running these in here as protection, that would also be good. So let's say you have one of your heavy impact um, board heavy angels on the battlefield, somebody goes for some spot removal, uh, go for cloud shift on it. You're going to be able to get plus one counters on it and at the same time protect it from that spot removal. Now we've talked about having a lot of angels in here, ways to generate angels. One of the big things that you definitely want to incorporate in a deck like this is because you're heavily investing in your board state and you're heavily investing in your creatures is running some sort of way to protect your creatures. Unbreakable formation, a chromos will, to fairies protection, once again, you're investing heavily in angels. You want to have some sort of way to, let's say that your opponent goes for something like Toxic Deluge, and it's going to wipe your entire angel army out. Uh, being able to Teferi's Protection in response to that, have that Toxic Deluge hit the entire board, then you have all of your angels back and ready to go with Teferi's Protection. So if you're investing heavily in angels in a deck like this, you definitely want to at least run these three cards in here to protect your uh, board state investment. 
uh, because this is one of the easiest ways to bounce back from a board wipe because it only costs you three or four mana and you have saved your board state depending on what's going on you know some of the stuff's not going to protect you from cyclonic rift but if somebody's going for damnation toxic deluge you know deal x damage to each creature hey these are great ways to bounce back from that. Uh, but that is going to be it for the deck. You know, like I mentioned with Gianna, you know, a lot of these decks are going to play out the same. But as you can see, there's a lot of different ways that you can generate angels. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can take your core angel creature package, depending on what kind of suits your play style. So the creativity on a deck like this is very low, but there's a lot of different, you know, game plays or game styles that you can go for where you can still get creative with that one. So... Um, I'm very excited about this deck. I've never built a mono white angel deck. If you have different things or different ideas that you're going to be putting into your Giada deck, hop in the comments below. I always like hearing different people's uh, you know, takes on Commander and different uh, deck ideas that they're going to be going into. And plus, people watching this video get to see that and have extra ideas for their actual deck. Uh, but that is going to be it for the video. In fact, if you enjoyed it, hey, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.